we're gonna have a short demonstration video at the end um, and I'm gonna use an orange. So a frequent request we have here on this channel is for somebody to talk about IVs. So starting an IV is a skill, uh, meaning the more you do it, the better you should get at it. But I don't want this video to maybe resemble something you would get in nursing school. Instead, I wanna kind of flip it a little bit and we're, I wanna talk about what to do when you don't get your IV and some things to consider. The first thing I want you to consider is, is what was the situation? Is this a new admission? Well, with new admissions, if you know anything about NICU babies, is, is, is that's probably the time that there's the most things going on. There's IVs happen to be started. Uh, the baby has to be admitted. X-rays have to be done. That, that's, that's a critical time. We've heard of the golden hour. This is, this is when that time starts. So what, what was the situation when you started the IV? Did you have a baby come over from nursery and did, did, you, did the baby have a critically low blood sugar? Were you in a hurry? Um, most of the time when you miss your IVs, it may be because you're in a hurry. Not only the situation, but the next thing to consider is, is what did you do prior to that? We're gonna have a short demonstration video at the end um, and I'm gonna use an orange. What did you do beforehand is the next thing to consider. I don't recommend you every time you miss an IV to go and have this big debriefing about oh, why did I miss this IV because you're going to miss IVs but maybe internally for the first you know minute and a half to two minutes nothing longer move on with your day what what did you do beforehand I can remember the first time I ever started an IV as as a new grad I do remember it was 27 28 weaker I do remember that the baby was on an oscillator and I do remember that I started it in a foot. If, you, if you're here to, and you have started an IVs on babies, comment about your experience because when I look back on that and I think back about it, when I, I was successful with that IV because I had somebody else prepare for me. I had somebody lay out the tape. I had somebody actually pick the spot for me. So those things, you now granted, the further along you get, as a nurse, you're not going to have somebody sit aside now. now you stick this, you stick this vein on this extremity. You're not going to have somebody do that. But what did you do beforehand? And this goes back to what we talked about before. But were you in a hurry and you didn't lay out your supplies? Did you cut your tape? Did you cut your your tegaderm? Um, did did you pick the right size IV? Did you you know all those factors play into it? So if you look back and you miss the IV, were you in a hurry? The second thing is, is did you prepare ahead of time? Did you lay out your supplies? Because you, starting the IV is only one aspect uh, of, of the whole cycle, the whole process. Not only do you have to start the IV, but you have to secure the IV. Because if you start an IV without securing the IV, what point is it? The third thing to consider is, is what was your patient's condition? Uh, were they extremely premature? We know the skin of a premature baby. The more premature they are, the more translucent, the more uh, sticky their skin can be. Your diabetic babies, um, your eight, nine pound, 10 pound baby, 36 weeker, those babies are difficult to stick. The common theme here is gonna be is, is IVs are, are difficult. It's doable, you can do it, but you have to consider every situation when you fail. The bigger patients, that might affect where you look for an IV. If we're gonna do a scalp IV, you stick baby with a lot of hair. Those are things to consider. Um, and, and you know, so when you miss, um, look back and say, well, well, nobody else got it either. Either this baby was really sick or this baby was, uh, you know, really big or really small. You have less surface area uh, less to work with when you start an IV on a smaller baby. Uh, remember, we're gonna talk about securing an IV. Um, it's harder to secure an IV on a smaller baby. Just as important as worrying about the angle of your stick, which extremity you stick, to make sure you secure your IV the best way possible so that the IV will last the longest. So the fourth thing to consider after you've missed your IV is did you ask for help? It's okay for you to know that the, the patient needs an IV and to look and say, I don't really see anything. If you don't see something and your patient needs an IV, I always recommend that you that you look, and then if you don't see something that you're comfortable with, why not ask for a buddy? 
And there's also nothing wrong with you getting a partner, whether it be a preceptor, whether it be a, uh, a nurse practitioner and getting them involved because maybe you can learn some different techniques and, and learn a better way to, to, you know, how to do things. So it, it, you're okay by asking for help. So things to consider when you fail your IV because you will fail. What is the situation? Were you in a hurry? Was this a new admission? Uh, was the baby critical? Did the baby need an IV line to get to get IV glucose? The next thing is, what did you do beforehand? Did you prepare? And tying into that is also asking for a buddy, asking for help. And, and then consider your patient. Consider those four things. But again, I don't recommend you, you spending long hours and, and long amount of time worrying about a missed procedure because it's going to happen. And the further you get as a nurse, I can remember the first times I didn't get started in IV, I would go home and I would lose sleep over it. Don't do that. Have a little small mini debriefing in your head internally, or you can talk about it with a fellow coworker who you trust, who is a good resource, and let's talk about it. Some things to consider when you miss your IV. All right. Really the reason y'all are here is to see me start an IV on an orange. I picked an orange just because the surface is not flat. Um, and this would help a lot with trying to start like maybe a scalp vein, okay? So I've got a couple of, of examples here. Straight and long, which is always best. Not as long, but straight. And then you have a little bifurcation, okay? And then I you probably can't see it very well, but here's a little squiggly. Uh, we'll let that represent a vein there, okay? So I've got a few supplies here. Remember, you're supposed to do this beforehand. I just want to show you what we're dealing with here. Yes, I'm wearing gloves. Yes, I've checked my order. Yes, I performed proper hand hygiene. All right, you'll flush it. All right, do this beforehand. I did do this before you ask for a buddy to come over and help you start an IV. I've already cut my Tegaderm. There are different ways to secure. Everybody has their favorite. Everybody has their way of doing things. You can always comment below and tell me what you what you like best. All right, so this Tegaderm can go this direction. It can go this direction. You pick, okay? And so you can see this is cut in half. You can cut it, uh, you can trim it down more. more. Um, again, it depends on the size of your baby. Um, small baby, less than two pounds, one and a half pounds. It'd be very difficult to stick this on their hand without it hanging off the side. So you have to, this is where, you're, this is where the skill is gonna come in. Um, with starting your IV. Another thing to think about um, when you're using a 10 cc syringe, which what, the, what this is, um, when you go to flush, the, if you've gotten flash and you're ready to hook up your IV, when you go to flush this IV, think about flushing with pressure and actually causing your vein to blow. There, um, some people may feel like they need to use maybe a 3 cc syringe, but then there's also, if you, all you have is tens, then you could take it, let's say you take a blunt tip needle and fill up a regular 3cc syringe, then you know you're, you're, you are breaking the sterility. Okay, and then the next thing I wanna show you, here is some IVs. Uh, let's look here, you can see it's a 24 gauge and five eighths. All right, I have another IV, 24 gauge and three and four, three fourths. Okay, same exact brand, um, um, but just there's some slight differences that we will look at. What I like to do to ward off evil spirits, um, I always get me two IVs. I only intend on sticking once, but you know, just just to you know keep everything right in the atmosphere, <laughs> you want to go ahead and get two. So I always open up two. These are there are different ones. Uh, two of these are different. Or the same one is different. So I usually open them up. All right, here's some tape. There's different types of tape. The blue tape is not my favorite, but I'll take it and I'm going to off camera. I'm just going to put it on the corner here in half. I like to do a couple of short ones, put it right here. It's off the edge of the table. And then I might do like a longer one and like so. And I'm going to just, I always like to do halves. Remember, you're sticking babies, little small babies, so it's okay to do that. So I'm just gonna do four for the sake of uh, teaching. All right, so this Cathlon, this is the five ace. Um, this is what I prefer, depending on your situation. It just usually will, 
kind of cover every you know different size baby that you may come up with there are smaller sizes um, but this is just kind of the catch-all utility uh, IV Cathlon all right so a couple things here's the wings this little chamber this is where uh, you want to see flash um, there's obviously we can we can talk about flash or no flash um, if you've ever stuck an adult and then you stuck a baby clearly you know the adults they have more flash up in this little chamber all right this little white piece here is like a little sponge all right and ideally when you stick you stick immediately and then you see flash but you might just see a trickle and still get the same result you still may have an iv remember the condition of the patient may affect how much flash you get so i'm going to use my arm to kind of show you an example of how to prep the area let's say for instance you have a baby that has you know a lot of you're trying to stick the scalp and you're going to have hair so here you can kind of see a vein now remember on babies you're not really gonna you're not really going to it's more what you see versus what you feel okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take I, i'm looking at a scalp vein here and i'm like oh i'm going to go right there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to try to wipe in both directions so the idea behind getting an iv is to kind of see an ending and a beginning. Uh, sometimes you might see this and then your your vein might, you know, get real valvey and kind of disappear. So ideally, not not every time, you may be able to you may be able to see a beginning and the end. I always recommend going for whatever is straightest. Remember we talked about before you want to at least get two sides. So if this if this were the the scalp, remember you're going to go Remember, is it is it towards the heart or away from the heart? Okay. If you're in the scalp, you want to go this direction. If you're in the arm, you want to go that direction. Okay. So I'm going to wipe, and I'm just want to kind of part the hair to where I can get just enough space. Take this IV to where I'll be able to, and I'm not going to stick myself to where you want to go in. Okay. So you need about as much space as you see right there. Okay. All right, you don't need a lot of view of a vein, okay, to be able to stick and get an IV, but you need enough space to where you can see a beginning and where you can see an end. So now we're gonna we're gonna turn to our magnificent orange here, okay? So we have two little spots. So we're doing a scalp, okay? Here's here's your vein. This is what we're gonna stick. We're gonna go ahead and ready get ready to start. I always recommend having a partner. Right, so let's just look at the mechanics of this. And you can see how the, the little cathlon's out. All right, now there are different types of IV cathlons. Um, I am more familiar with this. This is all I've ever used in the different facilities that I've worked, but there are ones that have a button, there's a little spring, okay? So your needle is right here, okay? It ends right there. The cathlon is shorter. So what I'm gonna do, you can see there, you see the little, see that? That's what's actually in the patient, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to find your spot. Okay, now it's super important to what to do with your free hand. I always recommend to take your free hand and you can want to kind of sh to, to make the skin taut. And this, you know, this and this this applies to whether you're doing scout, regardless of the extremity. And part of becoming a proficient IV sticker is to learn what to do with this hand. Okay. All right. Uh, remember, babies are a little bit more flexible, so you can kind of bend their feet and you know bend their hand up. If you're starting a hand, IV in the hand, you want to kind of make that surface flat, okay? So we're going to say it's going to be a scalp, okay? Now I've taken this and I've got I've got my free hand, all right, and I have a partner. Um, more, most of the time, the partner. What is the partner going to be doing? The partner's going to be helping me hold the baby still, or oh, and, and going to you know maybe 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 some moral support. Now let's talk about angle. Can you see it? That's pretty much it. This is a 90 degree angle. You're never gonna do that on a baby, right? There's a little tab right here. See the tab? All right, this tab will, will, will retract the needle and advance the cathlon. At what point do you advance the cathlon? Well, ideally when you see flash. All right, so I'm gonna go in. I like to kind of stabilize with my hand there. And I'm gonna go in at a minimal angle. You're not gonna have like a protractor and a compass to figure out your angle. That's about it though, folks. And as you go in, remember you can see the vein more than you can palpate it. You're gonna level out. All right, so I'm in. Now, the flash will be right here, okay? So let's say I do a situation. 
I've gotten flash. Now, the needle is in the skin, you're in the vein, you're going to advance your cath line and retract. You see it? It's going retract the needle. All right. Now, if you do not hear the click, you have not fully retracted the needle. All right. So at this point, this is when the situation becomes oh, crucial. I could say crucial. Um, you can um, you can lose your IV quick if you're not if you don't have a good partner. Okay. So I'm gonna unscrew it. All right. And for the sake of the, for the, just for the sake of, of teaching, um, I'm going to set this down. All right. Now, some people will take your tape and they'll put it across. They'll do the chevron underneath the wings. If you don't have wings and that's different. All right. For the, I'm just going to do, I'm going to show you what I do. Okay. I am more concerned with securing my IV. All right. So I'm doing this quickly. All right, so you see here, you see where where I've taped to that? Okay, I'm going to add my flush. Now you're doing this quickly, right? This is like seconds. You have a partner. Your partner can be either taping for you or uh, can be holding the baby either way or both. Okay, so at this point, I would want to flush. Now, what constitutes you being done? Now, obviously, this is not going to flush. You want this to flush easily. If you're having to push, that means you're in the skin and not in the vein. Okay, for the sake of teaching, we're in. Now, let's secure it. Here you go. Okay, so this is attached. And remember, I flushed. I've got good flush. It's obviously not going to flush because this is an orange and not a vein. Okay, I want to secure it a little bit more. Again, this is not the only way. Now, what I like to do is I like to be able to, I like to be able to see, right? Because it, it, when your IV starts to go bad, it, you might see some redness and some streaking here, right? All right, and then you can just, you know, you can possibly add another piece of tape, get your other part of your tegaderm. There you go.